Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm on the edge of the Wicklow National Park here in Ireland and I'm about to go and have a play day with this 2021 Yamaha Tracer 9. Now, as I speak, this is currently Europe's best-selling sports touring machine. So without further ado, let's strike up the band and go and see what all the fuss is about. Beautiful scenery around here, but I know you're not interested in that. <laughs> Maybe you will be later. So, my first impressions, which is what I like to give you as soon as I climb on any motorbike, is the riding position. And I have to say, it's very comfortable. The handlebars seem a little bit lower down than an adventure bike, but of course this isn't an adventure bike as such, it's classed as a sports tour. The mirrors are very ni nicely spaced apart as well. What I do love is that <laughs> I can't see the corner of my jacket, on my shoulders rather, in the mirrors because on this particular jacket, which I wear quite a bit, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but it has white stripes to, on the sleeves and quite often when I catch a, a glimpse of the white stripe in the mirrors on lots of bikes, I'd sort of m m miss a beat if you like, thinking that it's a police car or something behind me. It's not, it's only my jacket. Maybe I need to go for an eye test. <laughs> now, let's address the elephant in the room straight away, will we? Because I know this divides a lot of you. And I have to say, it's a bit of a bone of contention with me. The layout of this dash, the two screens and yeah, you saw it, the nose. So basically the two eyes and the nose. I would liken it to something between that of a scuba diver's face and Darth Vader. And I think once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's going to be staring at me for the day, this. <laughs> ne nevertheless, <laughs> both screens are very clear readouts on them. Now I'm not so sure about the left hand screen whether you can customise it but on the right hand screen it's split into four boxes there as you can see and there's a little um, uh, 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 whiz wheel here down by my right thumb here so you can scroll through um, all of the settings and select it and customise it what you want in uh, each box basically. So I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm on uh, trip one for the minute. You can go through, basically select, it's totally customizable, fuel gauges and everything in there. We must be climbing quite high here because my ears have just popped. The, uh, the seat comfort straight off is a little bit hard. I do love the note of this engine, by the way take it handy for the minute we're still on single track roads uh, yeah uh, the seat comfort I think it's a familiar trait now of Yamaha having owned the uh, I'm just gonna close my visor because it's getting very cold we're obviously climbing quite high here yeah it's a familiar trait with a lot of uh, Yamaha bikes certainly that I've ridden but the seats are quite hard hope here we go don't want to be coming around the corner at speed these beautiful roads, by the way, are famed for sheep and something a little less lovable, cyclists. So, so you do have to take your time when you're uh, winding your way around these roads. Nevertheless, it's a beautiful part of the world. So yeah, I have a bit of a problem with Yamaha's seats. As I say, the, uh, uh, one of the big letdowns on such an amazing bike of the, uh, as the FGR was the seat. So I know there are many third party seats you can buy uh, for this model as well. What I did with the FGR actually was I bought a, a gel comfort seat off Amazon for around 50 euro rather than going out and spending 500 euro on a third party seat. And it's the same with this bike. In fact, now I've addressed it, I can definitely tell this seat might cause problems if you're on it for a few hours. 
and indeed I'm told Yamaha also sell a comfort seat for this particular model. Now I have a huge problem with that because if Yamaha are aware that the seat isn't comfortable why do they not just put the comfort seat on from the get-go and sell it with the comfort seat rather than charging customers well whatever it is maybe it's 300 pound or 400 euro whatever they are they all seem to be in and around that ballpark figure for a third party seat so that's my little bugbear out the way straight off however I will tell you at the end of today's ride if the seat comfort has improved but I'm only giving you my initial first impressions I've been on the bike for less than 10 minutes and I just wanted to tell you exactly my first impressions um, engine note I don't know how well you can hear that on the microphone inside the helmet here um, but it sounds sweet it sounds very nice of course it's the 890 cc triple same engine which is in the MT-09 in fact it's a very similar bike to the MT-09 probably is the MT-09 just with uh, a different dress on and on that note I have to say I prefer the look of the GT version which is uh, another 2000 euros uh, here in Ireland anyway and the reason I'm saying I prefer the look of the GT is because uh, if that extra colour scheme it comes in, which is like a, a blue and black, uh, sorry, it's a silver and black bike, the um, GT model, which I prefer, but it has blue wheels and it really sets it off. It's a gorgeous looking bike. Not a huge fan of the red uh, in this Tracer 9 model. Uh, this model also comes with one other colour, which is like a camouflage green. Actually, I would prefer that over the red. I think it looks gorgeous, that colour as well. feels very planted as you all know I don't like using that word but I still haven't found a, a better use of a word for describing how the bike feels so at the moment it feels planted on paper it's quite a heavy bike actually it's uh, 213 kilograms fully wet but it doesn't feel like it on the road it's actually I wouldn't say flickable but it's uh, definitely agile, which I like. I don't, I, I don't like a light bike, but uh, it feels very solid, which is a good start. Right, where are we going? I think we'll go left here. I love just following roads, and this part of the world is gorgeous. 18 litre fuel tank on it which should uh, I think well I'll let you know what my averages are at the end of today but uh, I've read online that the bike does between 55 and 60 which is standard for a 900cc bike and certainly of this weight so you probably get about 300 kilometres maybe it's more actually on a tank of fuel and if you're like me I would prefer to sort of do a coffee stop every hundred kilometers or so so you've no issue there with the size of the tank 93 newton meters of torque on this bike at 7,000 revs which delivers about 110 horsepower at uh, 10,000 revs so oodles of power there I know that's all relative to the weight of the bike and as I've just mentioned it's 213 kilograms wet but there's still loads of power hopefully I'll uh, go back up to Dublin at the end of today on the motorway and I'll wind her up then look at this scenery folks what a playground very comfortable riding position actually my uh, the foot pegs seem quite low down so even my little legs aren't uh, bent backwards or anything uh, it's just a really nice 90 degree angle on both knees which is super so I'm gonna come to a standstill at the top of the road here and uh, introduce you to a new little strand I'm gonna feature in all my bike reviews from here on in I'm gonna call it the spec check 
It's where I can give you all of the technical info and measurements and stats and whatever else all in one burst. Just uh, to save me uh, trying to remember everything as I'm riding along. <laughs> okay, I'll pull in now and uh, introduce you to that. I've been in your Welcome to my first ever strand within a review called the Spec Check. The idea is to bamboozle you all in one hit with all of the nerdy data and stuff even the most anorakish of us would yawn at. But I'm still going to do it, so here it goes. First off, the bike is of course the Yamaha Tracer 9, formerly known as the 900, but I suppose they had to change something about it for 2021. It comes in two colours, which is this red and also a tech camo green. I'm going to give you a laugh here. Yamaha state that, and I quote, This particular green tint creates a powerful and mature look that reflects the bike's long distance capabilities. Bollocks. That's the same as saying my shit car goes faster because it has stripes on it. I will give them the credit though for the sublime 890cc triple engine which screams a beautiful note, especially when winding her on over and above 5000 revs. But I still prefer a parallel twin personally, as I love the symphony to begin a little lower on the counter. The bike produces 93 newton meters of torque at 7000 rpm and 110 ponies at 10000 rpm, which to use an Irish term is mighty crack. It weighs 213 kilograms wet, so that's still agile but not too flighty, and has an 18 litre fuel tank to carry you through the six speed box in excess of 300 kilometres for a range. The suspension comprises of 41mm telescopic front forks and a single shock swing arm on the rear and are fully adjustable with both rebound and dampening. The front brakes are four pot Nissan calipers, whilst the rear brake is just a single pot and you can notice that I'll be honest. Twin discs of 298 mils on the front really do bring the impressive stop and power single handedly, leaving the back brake, well just to feel as though it turned up for the party. Ok, on to a few dimensions now, just in case you are still awake, check your pulse again in another 30 seconds. The length is 85 inches, the width 35 inches, whilst the height is 58 inches. That's obviously measured to the top of the screen whilst it's fully extended. The wheelbase is 59 inches and a ground clearance of just over 5 inches. Phew! LED lights all round, a manually adjustable windscreen and a huge array of information on this dashboard, albeit split into two sections, gives the rider enough options to tailor make the setup to their liking. Four programmable rider modes along with traction control, anti-wheelie control, anti-slide control definitely doesn't mean anti-fun control. It actually means the level of safety is well impressive on a bike of this price, especially since it all runs through a six-axis IMU, which basically applies all of these features proportionally depending on your lean angle. A lot of us, including myself, always used to think with this new wave of tech that there's more to go wrong, but I've now learned to embrace it as well as trust it, and hopefully a visit to the garage will only be once every 10,000 kilometres for a service, which actually is another selling point of this bike. The bike comes with a side stand as well as a centre stand and has a small storage space for a sandwich underneath the pillion seat, as well as a small toolkit, so there has been some attention to detail. Okay, that's the first ever spec check done and dusted. Okay folks, I'm just going to show you a little height test. I'm uh, 5 foot 8, have a 29 inch inseam and uh, I can touch the, the ground no problem either side. Not quite flat footed, but good enough. These are Alpine Stars dry star boots as well, so they're not raised up or anything, they're just normal, so... The seat height is on the lowest setting as well, so uh, that obviously helps. The lowest setting is 810 millimetres on this bike, but it does raise up to 825 millimetres. So if you're a tally or a shorty, this bike pretty much suits all. Now when you 
vertically challenged like myself the foot pegs are exactly where I need to put my legs down on the ground so whilst I can come to a stop no problem um, I've had a couple of instances today where I've had to sort of push the bike backwards now that means I have to splay my feet even further out and I don't have the extra inches uh, in my inseam anyway uh, to enable me to do that so I found myself getting off the bike to push it backwards the only thing I'd say about that is thank god I'm in a national park and there's not many people around to see that because it's always a bit embarrassing I think but uh, so that's just another gripe sorry about that but I'm trying to tell you everything I'm finding on this bike today okay onwards now the GT model comes with panniers quick shifter as standard and heated grips it also has uh, a semi-active uh, suspension, basically electronic suspension. So uh, for an extra 2,000 euro, you get all of that thrown into the GT model. I'd definitely pay that if I was buying one of these, if I was in the market for one of these. Definitely pay that extra two grand to get all of those uh, little perks. However, and again, this is subjective, I don't like the shape of the panniers on the GT model. But I'm sure there are many third-party panniers to add on to both this model and the GT. This model actually has a quick shifter fitted. And you have to pay extra for that. I'm not sure how much. I think in the UK it's about £200 sterling. Which I would pay without even thinking to have the quick shifter fitted. The tyres are uh, Bridgestone Battle Axe tyres, which are just brilliant loads of grip in all conditions actually and uh, the last for ages <laughs> suspension is a bit tough especially going over these but that's that's only because of the uh, stock settings you um, can adjust them you can adjust rebound and dampening actually on this suspension setup and I always say that's part of the fun with a new bike I love setting bikes up to exactly how I like them one handy little thing I, I do like about this because uh, there's no phone mount here for my sat nav which is why I'm sort of guessing where I'm going so my phone is actually in my pocket and I'm feeding the directions through my Senna Bluetooth system which is installed within the helmet obviously but uh, one thing that, the, uh, that this bike has is a 12 volt auxiliary socket hidden behind here so I have an adapter with me and my phone lead because I'm using sat-nav, we all know how quick that drains your phone battery. So if I'm lucky enough to find somewhere for a sandwich, which is looking very doubtful <laughs> in this national park, but you know what I mean, if I uh, get to stop for half an hour, I'll just plug the lead into the auxiliary socket here and give the phone a wee boost. Still surprises me how many bikes, even new bikes today, don't come with a USB socket, a standard, or a, an auxiliary socket. So it's nice that this bike has that feature. Of course, it's not just to power your phone, you can also power your GoPros and Insta360 cameras and whatever else you want to stick in there. Right, I've had to stop and show you this because I noticed that when I was doing the, uh, the spec check, take a look at this, this will play havoc with my OCD now. So unless you switch the lights into main beam, only the uh, two LEDs come on then. But when you're in dipped headlights, like that, only one of them comes on. Sorry, I'm not sure I could live with that. <laughs> I'd have to keep me the lights on main beam all of the time. Maybe that's why they do it, to encourage you to do that. Anyway, so that's just upset the apple cart a little bit. The fuel tank... It's quite wide. I don't know if you get the impression there. Let me tilt the camera down. Which is quite, again, all adds to the riding position. I, I don't like a skinny bike. I like uh, something to grip, if I want of, uh, a better expression. And you can certainly grip this with your, with your knees. That's lovely. A lovely riding position. Now, the more I'm riding this, yeah, the seat is going to be an issue for me. It's got an assist and slipper clutch as well, so very sort of finger light, very smooth, buttery smooth, no issues there. Of course, when you've got the quick shifter. 
don't need to use that clutch even just to get into first gear <laughs> and then quick shift from there on so this bike is currently twelve and a half thousand euros here in Ireland and the GT version is fourteen and a half thousand it's got a manually adjustable windscreen here which you literally just squeeze in and raise up and down to your liking I haven't uh, had the chance to open the bike up enough yet to check how effective the windscreen is but at 5 foot 8 it, uh, it sits just below my eye level on the maximum setting which is good enough for me I never like looking through a windscreen on a motorbike because because of the perspex your, your view is always going to be slightly distorted so I like to have as clear a view as possible and have my eyes sitting right just above the eye line of the uh, of the screen but if I get to hit the motorway on the way back up to Mega Bikes this afternoon I'll tell you just how effective the windscreen is there's a lot of side wind at the minute coming in so I can't really check at all how good that screen is instant response loads of power there and what's quite nice is that it's all happening just slightly above 3000 revs which is great so you can have a, a good bit of fun on this as well and that's obviously the sports side of the tour coming into play look at these roads folks this is really good I hope the sounds okay because uh, that side wind is quite fierce and uh, I can hear it inside the helmet here oh this is beautiful brakes are superb there I just uh, tip them on the corner I'll do it again I'll just take nothing's behind me just get on the straight road from brake yeah no problems there at all really good and I didn't even slam them on I'm just going to get past these sheep and uh, touch the back brake and see how that performs that's all back brake yeah as usual the back brake um, <laughs> will we'll stop you sometimes but try the front brake again oh wow that's absolute pin sharp really good it's not a bike I would look at but hey each to our own there's no such thing as one bike for everybody that's why there's a market <laughs> what appeals to one person obviously doesn't appeal to the next I love a good sense of road feedback coming up through the tires into the bike but I don't like it to end at my backside and that's what's happening whenever I think I don't like something about this bike I just open it up again and uh, listen to that exhaust note because it is just beautiful the handling is as good as the note as well so I've just come out onto the dual carriageway it's 100 kilometers per hour here so uh, I'll just set the cruise control and we'll stay at that so as per expected the cruise control clicks straight into place there and you can obviously use the plus and minus to adjust that ever so slightly which I will do now actually because I've just noticed I'm doing 102 so there you go so that's adjusted it ever so slightly um, first off the bike is sitting absolutely solid upright and I'll use that word again planted as you would expect but however Houston we have a problem the buffeting that I'm experiencing even at a hundred well just slightly less than a hundred kilometers per hour uh, shouldn't be happening it's a very calm day there's no wind here as you can see by the trees they're not even moving and I feel as though I'm on a naked uh, bike in fact the screen is totally up to the top I wonder if I can put no it's difficult to put the screen down when you're doing this stage uh, of speed because of the force on it ah uh, this isn't good folks there's a lot of buffeting in fact there's so much buffeting it's making the steering slightly twitchy because it's affecting my upper body 
It's hitting the helmet as well, but it's affecting my shoulders and my arms. Now, I suspect the cutouts here have a lot to do with that. I know you can buy a third-party spoiler to go on top of the windscreen, but there's a couple of problems with that. The first one is, why should I? If you're paying 12,500 euro in Ireland for a brand new bike, you'd expect all of these problems to have been ironed out. The second problem is that uh, with a, with a third-party spoiler, it'll be in your eye line, And I don't like that. I like to be able to see above this. Maybe you can buy something to fill in these gaps, but then the steering uh, wouldn't turn properly at slower speeds, because that's obviously what these gaps are for. I'm very disappointed with this. There's a lot of buffeting. I, 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 do you know what? If I'd taken this for the weekend to go away on a road trip, I'd be returning it, because this takes the enjoyment out of any touring expedition. Whether it be three or four hours on a bike, or three or four days, well, you certainly couldn't do it with a windscreen like this. You'd have to have that fixed. And yet again, like the seat, you know, Yamaha are aware of this. Why do they do it? That drives me insane, it really does. So many manufacturers have stepped up to the mark, and, and they listen to their customers, they listen to feedback, and they address the problems. Come on, Yamaha, get into gear, will you? Sort this out. So I suppose it's time to sum everything up from today and give you my honest thoughts. I'll start by saying I love motorcycles. I never come out to dish any motorcycle. I, I, I honestly come out to love them all. I just haven't quite fallen in love with this. And I think it's to do with the reason of when I owned the FGR, the two most annoying problems were the seat and the windscreen. And now, I'm, uh, by the way, my FGR was 2010 model, and now I'm on a 2021 Yamaha, albeit different model, still a sports tourer. And those problems are still inherent. Uh, what's that about? I'm sorry. It's just turned me off massively. I, I wouldn't buy one on the strength of those really two big negatives for me. Um, on top of that, again thrown into the mix, it doesn't set me alight looks-wise, but that blue and black colour, or silver and black with the blue wheels of the GT version does. Um, saying all of that, the bike is lovely to ride. Um, it has power in bucketfuls. Um, you know, you could ride around on this all week as a commuter and then go out and uh, enjoy the sports part of the sports tour a tag it comes with. Anyway, I do this to be honest to you all, so and I have no doubt there'll be a few Yamaha fan people uh, slating me in the comments section below. And, uh, you know, I don't mean to, to knock the bike on purpose. All I aim to do is to give you my findings. Um, my findings are my own, and I'm not influenced by anybody else. So that's it, folks. I really did want to love this. I quite honestly can't believe it's Europe's top-selling sports tourer. Sorry to end on a negative. I really did want to love it. Thanks for tuning in all the same. And huge thanks to Megabikes again for uh, loaning me this for the day. Ah, well, I do hope you found this uh, video interesting and informative. Unfortunately, you can't love everything you ride. I'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> thanks for tuning in, folks. I'm Dave Perry for Wheelie Good TV. Over and out. Another little bit of information here is um, my fuel average today was 4.3 litres per 100 kilometres and my trip was 165 kilometres long. So there you go. I think they're good enough figures anyway in terms of economy. <laughs>